you know, Gloria Galante, welcome to Chautauqua. You have the concert and, uh, you know, whatever it turns out to be will be great. You know, we had mentioned somewhere around an hour, but however it works out. Uh, okay. my, and then after that, my students will uh, be thrilled to ask you a couple questions. If anyone um, in um, the uh, listening, uh, viewing Zoom audience has any questions for you, uh, they can put it in on the chat and I can read them to you later. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And, and, I, and I really thank your teacher, Mr. Pratt, and all of you students. I'm here, I'm just so thrilled to be a part of your today. Anyway, this is my beautiful gold harp. I waited a lifetime for this harp. I'm gonna show you a little picture. Um, I was age, 13 when I started playing the harp. So you can see my little picture when I first started. Um, I could read music as you could see. I entered the orchestra and I entered late. So my choices of instruments were the trombone, the tuba, or the harp. Ta-da, the harp won. So the harp has 47 strings and I'm gonna play every one in a big glissando. Top, and it's just magnificent. And there's red strings, which are all of your C's. And it's just like a piano, but standing upright in, in one way, that you have C and then D, E, and then the dark strings are black, and that's F, and then we have G, A, B, C. So seven of the diatonic notes on the scale. Um, just like the piano has white keys, this is set up in white keys. Now, if you can think of my pedals, there's seven. Three is on the left side and four is on the right side. Okay, so, right, three on the left, four on the right. So it's, did Columbus bring enough food going to America? You don't need to know that, but it's set up A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the way I learned it was A all the way on the right side and then B, C, D, E, F, G. And that's because that's the way they fit into this hollow column. You see, this harp is gilded, gilded 23 karat gold. So I'm going to play a beautiful piece for you that was written especially for the harp called Chanson, which means a song. <clears throat> and I'm moving around all the pedals, so here we go. because a lot of people ask me, how come you never play the really low string or the really high string? So the lowest string is low C, 
just like on a piano, and the top is G. I'm not sure if the top what the top note is on the piano, but I think it's similar. Anyway, we have seven octaves, and in the pedals, the pedals go, if you can think of sharp on the top, natural, and flat. So there's one pedal for each name of the scale, and so the flats go up. Now in music, we're taught that flats are lower, but in order for them to go lower on the harp, we must raise our pedal, and then it loosens the string. So it all has to deal with the tension. So while I'm playing my harp strings, I'm moving my feet fa fast and furious. So my teacher, Edna Phillips, who studied with the famous Carlos Salzedo, I can show you his picture. This is the style. Uh, can you see that picture okay? Yes. He was the famous harpist that came from France and his original name was Charles Leon Salzedo. And when he moved to America, he changed his name to Carlos Salzedo. And he wrote the suite of eight dances, like in a Spanish sort of style, bolero, rumba, and all those things. And he created the harp technique and many, many of the effects that we play today. He taught my teacher, Edna Phillips, the first woman in the Philadelphia Orchestra to play the harp. And he was the teacher at Curtis Institute. Later, he moved to New York and played in the New York Philharmonic. And then Edna took over the job at the Curtis Institute. But anyway, their famous sayings were, you have to work like the devil to play like an angel. So now the next piece that I'd like to play for you is called the angel. And it features a very beautiful technique that is, you know, a lot of instruments, a trombone could do it, a glissando, but the harp seems to do it the most natural. It's sort of easy for a harpist to do this, you know, the running of the strings. But what people, they don't realize is that the footwork is moving around, creating like a flawless piece of nice. So this is called the angel. on the harp. Seven and the harp makes you feel like you're in heaven. But 47 strings are on the pedal harp or the concert harp. Um, they are the big uh, Jeopardy questions. If you ever get to uh, have to answer any questions about a harp, they're usually the two. The method that I'm playing is Salcedo and the elbows are up and I have many gestures and that's used for projection. So the family that the uh, harp is in in the orchestra would be the string family, although it sits near the percussion because sometimes the harp has percussion effects. So between the strings and percussion. And the colored strings, red strings are for C as in cats, and the dark strings, black, are for F as in frog. So if you want to take any of these notes down. And where do you think the sound would come from on the harp? A lot of people think it's coming from the strings, but it's the strings vibrating against the soundboard that really produce the sound. So the best way that I'm sitting with my soundboard facing you, I'm really showing you, um, and, and you're really getting right the direct vibrations. So now I thought we'd get some popular music. And this next piece is from Shrek. And you may know it, uh, famous Leonard Cohen wrote it called Hallelujah. 
much. So the harp dates back to around 3000 BC and they say it originated from the hunter's bow. That when they put three bows together they could make um, a chord. And then that music uh, in the Bible it's mentioned 44 times that a type of harp named uh, kinor, a 10 string harp, probably about this many strings, was used to accompany the psalms. And the harp can go all over the world. You have a, um, a cora, which is a big bow with a soundboard. And it was about the 18th century that the harp started having some pedals added to it. And that was called the single action. So the pedals on a really, really old harp would only go flat to natural. And then this is called the double uh, pedal harp. Double pedals, meaning it goes double action. Uh, flat and then natural and then sharp. So I'm going to play a C. Now I'm going to move the pedal. That's my C flat. Now I'm gonna play C flat again and not play the string, but move the pedal. So if you can hear that, it went C flat, C natural, C sharp, C natural, C flat. And so in a way I'm setting my my footwork up like a chess game with enharmonics, notes that sound the same but are spelled differently. So I'm going to play a beautiful piece and I've been playing it a lot in the pandemic. It's called In My Solitude. It's a famous piece um, done by so many uh, wonderful artists, Billy Holiday and, and uh, Duke um, wrote it. So it is is a beautiful jazz standard. So you're sort of sort of Ashby was the first player to real jazz chords. So you can look her up, Dorothy Ashby. She recorded on Stevie Wonder's um, In the Keys of Life album, If It's Magic. So here we go. Arrangement like in her style, I, I would say. It's Dorothy Ashby in my solitude. Mm -hmm.
So much thank you so much so now we have learned so far that the harp has 47 strings and seven pedals and it makes you feel like you're in heaven Let me shut my phone off sorry about that <laughs> and um, this the method is from mr. Carlos Salzado and the harp dates back to 3000 BC it ori originated from the hunter's bow and arrow and so far, I've named several famous harpists, one being Dorothy Ashby, the first female hip bebop, I would say bebop or uh, jazz harpist, and Edna Phillips, who was my first uh, uh, woman harp teacher in the Philadelphia Orchestra, Carlos Salzado, uh, amongst, uh, amongst so many of the famous uh, legends that are out there. So I've had uh, several harp teachers, one being Nicanor Zabaleta. He made the harp a uh, salon, uh, took it from the salon instrument, meaning in the 18th century, they basically played home concerts called salons. And then he's the one that brought it out into the orchestra to become a concerto solo instrument. So Nicanor Zabaleta was from Spain and his wife uh, was from Puerto Rico and I met them when I performed in Puerto Rico for two years uh, with different orchestras, mainly the Jose Feliciano Orchestra. So we learned a couple of the effects on the harps, if you can remember the glissando. And you at home, I was wondering if, if I play a little song that you can do this little, uh, pretend you have an air harp, if you will, and I'll show you a little bit of the harp technique. So your elbows go in the air, and you have like a handshake, but this way, and you get your index finger. So with me, if you'd like to try it, then you just pretend that the harp strings from your heart, you're playing the middle. A lot of people want to follow the curvature of the neck. But anyway, so here we go. Let's bring one line after the other all the way up into your face. If you want to try it at home, here we go. We're in school, and then the thumbs come down. Very nice. And so that is how you do the feet 
are a whole nother thing. <laughs> so now I'd like to play some contemporary music for you. And this will be a little medley of the Beatles. The Beatles uh, were a wonderful group and uh, rock group. They really changed the scene of rock music and started off a whole new world. They were influenced by so many different world cultures. But anyway, so the first piece I'd like to play for you, uh, well, it'll be a little medley, Elder Rigby and Norwegian Wood.
much. Thank you so much. Well, I did mention where the harp originated. It originated from the hunter's bow and arrow, and that would be in 3000 BC. So the harp has had many developments, but since the 18th century into the 19th is when they added the double action pedal harp. Then really the most recent, I guess, um, improvement to the harp or a different type of harp is the electric harp, just like an electric guitar, be like a block of wood, um, ha could have many pickups to it. So there are different electric harps, but this harp uh, was made in Ly um, Chicago from the company called Lion and Healy. And it's over a hundred year old company. They used to make pianos and harp pianos, if you can believe it. The back of the piano was like, looks like part of a harp. Um, the problem with those instruments is they didn't sound very strong. So the harp on its own is probably a better, a way better instrument and a lot more interesting, I think, to look at as well. The whole harp, you know, is so beautiful. Um, it's hand carved. So to get a harp sort of like this, it would take uh, maybe a year or two for them to make and they would make them two at a time. And while one is drying, like, because the whole thing's held together by glue seams, if you can think about that. You could never leave this in a hot car, not even for five minutes, because the glue seams, like piano, the glue seams can kind of unravel. And it would take a little bit of time for it to do, but that would do damage to a harp. In the winter, we have to run like a cold water evaporator. So just think of instruments as little babies. You have to take care of them. Um, and with condition of the air and the temperature and all of that. So anyway, so getting back to the harp. So I played some beautiful real harp arrangements and some contemporary music and some Beatles. And now I'd like to play some classical music. This one piece is the, the all time favorite at weddings and one of my most favorites called the Canon in D by Johann Pachelbel. And why I think this is such an important song, first of all, it was from the Baroque period, 1600s. And back then it was not well received. So if you ever write some music, any composers out there, don't give up the ship because sometimes it's years later that they discover how brilliant you are. So anyway, Canon and D has this ground in the bass. It goes down a fourth, which is four strings away. Then it goes up a second and then back down a fourth and then up a second, and then back down a fourth. How brilliant, that's so nice and easy. Then back up a fourth, and then back up a second for the turnaround. And then you add the chords, and then it starts with a theme and a variation. And it's beautiful. I play it for many, many weddings, and the brides, they're so cute. The brides think that the real intricate part is the canon and D, but really it's the whole thing. The beginning is the theme, that part I just played for you. And the rest, just builds and builds and builds. So I'd like to play the Canon in D by Johann Pachelbel.
so much. Thank you so much. That is a beautiful piece of, you know, anybody having a wedding, it's a great recommendation. Okay, so now the next classical piece that I'd like to play for you is going to have some Spanish flares in honor of my teacher, Nicanor Zabaleta, and also Maria Rosa. Now, you didn't hear of her name. Her name's Maria Rosa Vidal. She studied with Henrietta Renier. So if you can think of the top of the mountain being the Paris Conservatory, and their Hosselmans began the HARP program at the Paris Conservatory, which is a wonderful music school in Paris. And then Hosselmans taught Henrietta Renier, which was one of his protégés. But when you're in the 18th century and a woman, it wasn't known to do much but be a homekeeper back in those times. But she did not get married or have children. So she became a composer, a harpist, at age eight, she began the harp, and she was so tiny, they had to build these big blocks in order for her little feet to reach and move the pedals. But she wrote some of the most amazing harp music. Um, I can play a beautiful piece from her, actually, that you can hear a really beautiful harp piece called Angelus. Anyway, Henrietta, she taught Nicanor Zabaleta and also um, Carlos Salzedo as well as Hasselmans, they all kind of taught everybody. And Marcel Granjanet. So today we hear the names mainly Marcel Granjanet and Carlos Salzedo. The Salzedo method is with the elbows up. You get a lot of projection and a lot of effects and that was written by Carlos Salzedo. That's great for orchestra playing. The Granjanet method is beautiful, fluid lines, a lot of velocity playing. That's what Nicanor Zabaleta's style was, the Granjanet method. But really, it was the Henrietta Renier method because she taught him. But later, he added to it and then made it the Granjani method. So if you can get that story, there you go. So the next piece that I'd like to play for you first will be Angelus, and then we're going to get into some Spanish flair music on the harp. Okay, so now this is in the key of the pedal harp, which is the key of C flat major. That means all my pedals are at the top position all flats, C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, right? So they're all flats. That's usually somebody else's instrument's nightmare to play all flats and all sharps. They want like easier keys like G or C, maybe. Maybe uh, a B is okay, B flat, but the all flats is crazy. Anyway, the harp composer must write all of the flats to show the key signature. But there's this thing called prepared glissando, which I'm gonna start out with right here. This piece is called Angelus, which Henrietta Renier composed from a suite of Album de Feliz, which means pages of a book. And so this was from the Noontime Prayers. That's what Angelus stands for. So it's supposed to emulate a carillion, like ringing the clock at noontime. But then this prepared glissando, she has all the pedal work done in solfege. So the harpist must be able to read the feet work in solfege like uh, do natural, which would be C for do and so on and so forth, as well as the little effects and things that happen along the way. Here we go with Angelus, just enjoy.
so much okay so now the next two pieces will be as i promised in the spanish flair which is some of my favorite music and this piece has three titles it can be either called spanish romanza and please forgive my french it, le jeu en tardeau which means i think it's um well i don't really know the translation but um the last piece is from the movie or the title of the song from Forbidden Games. That was a movie, so you may remember this piece. But I just call it Spanish Romanza. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next piece is uh, taken from Jean-Jacques Rousseau. So it's got a little mixture of 18th century, uh, a little beautiful Baroque sort of little melody. And then it's intertwined with a uh, flamenco style of music. And this is put together or composed by the wonderful jazz harpist of Boston, Deborah. Henson Conant. And she just did this wonderful uh, five-day challenge of her famous piece called that she titles The Baroque Flamenco. And so I'd like to present it for you today. Anyway, this uh, piece is really amazing because it'll emulate a little bit of a Spanish guitar, which I sort of did by plucking out my fingernail, but also with actually holding some of the strings and then doing some kind like a Spanish drum, if you can hear that sort of sound. So, so far I've done a couple effects. I've done the glissando, and then we did the harmonics, which was an angelus, the little bells, right? And then we did the, uh, the little picking of the fingernail, which is like a little Spanish guitar or holding and the strum. Can make it even sound like a ukulele. That, the harp is amazing. You can 
tap on it and give it like some percussion, some bongo. You can hit it like a gong. So I'll be showing you a piece like that in a moment. But this is Baroque Flamenco. Enjoy. <laughs> and answers before the last piece. How's that? That sounds great. 
Okay. Okay. Hi. My name's Elena. Hi there, Elena. What's your favorite song to play? Well, I would say I have so many, but the last song that I'm going to play for you today is my absolute favorite. I've arranged it. It's called Sakura, which in Japan means cherry blossoms. And I like it because I have all these cool effects that I get to play and it's fun to make the gong on the harp you know, and all the different little sounds that of Japanese instruments. Thanks. Do you play an instrument? Uh, no. Oh, no. Well, if you could, what instrument would you play? Uh, a drum. The drums, yeah. Well, the harp has drums kind of built into it, which is fun. The drums are really fun. Well, you should play the drums. Awesome. Thank you for your question. Are there any others? Thank you. Thank you. Hello. What is your name? Emma. Emma. Hello, Emma. All right. And my question for you is, why did you choose the harp over any other instrument? Well, um, I signed up late to be in the high school orchestra. Originally, I started piano when I was five. And then at age 13, you had to pick an orchestral instrument. But I didn't have such a great music education background. I mean, went to a Catholic school and I, I saw the church organ, I saw guitar mass, you know, and I played the piano all through um, elementary school, Emma. So when I went to high school, there was this huge music program and they said, oh, the orchestra, you have to pick an orchestral instrument. So, but you're signing up late. All we have left is trombone, tuba, or the harp. And the harp is very similar to the piano because I could really read music you can pick it up way faster. Do you play an instrument, Emma? I do not play an instrument. I... Oh, well, let's change the picture. Come on, you can, you can pick up a harmonica today, or you can pick up a tin whistle. It's so much fun. Even your voice is an instrument. I did, yeah, I did choir. Yes, awesome, choir's awesome. Okay, are there any other questions that you have? Thank you, Thank you Emma. Hi, my name is Zara. Zara, hi, nice to meet you. Good. Um, I want to ask you uh, if you could play next to someone, anyone in the world, who would you play with? Play, uh, Jesus, maybe. <laughs> that would be really amazing. <laughs> but um, right now, I feel the Lord is always with me in a lot of my beautiful, well, all, all the things I play. But uh, a physical person here on earth, I would say it would be really awesome to play with, um, I'm, I'm really wanting to play with Jack DeJanet. He's this famous drummer. And because I play jazz and to have my husband who plays bass and the harp with Jack DeJanet on drums, I think that would be really cool. But if you're looking for me to play with a harpist, uh, I would say there's so many phenomenal in, um, harpist, but the one that I, I really am really great friends with, and I've got to play with her one time recently because I had her play with our students at Westchester University, is Claire Jones, and she's the royal harpist uh, to his royal highness, Prince, um, that just lost his father. So, yeah, so she's really wonderful. But look her up, Claire Jones. She's phenomenal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Hi. I can't hear you. Sorry, My your name, name is? Ashante. Ashante, how are you? I have a I'm student good. harpist you? name, Ashante. Beautiful. My question for you is how long would you say that it took you to like master the harp? How, okay. So when, when I first started playing the harp, they made me play actually percussion because I could read the mallets, but it took the harp at least six months to get going. And that um, little melody in Baroque Flamenco was my very first little song that I played on the harp. But to answer your question, I want to say 
still I'm mastering the harp. You know, there's still so much to learn all the time. And I'm so excited, always learning new things and new repertoire and new styles. But to really get to a proficient level, I want to say, you know, a good eight years on the instrument to really, really, really master it and study a lot of the repertoire and master classes and things like that. Do you play an instrument? No, I don't. Oh, if you could choose one, which would you choose? Uh, the guitar. Oh, the guitar is so fabulous. You know, I played the guitar and I felt like the guitar sort of, um, I guess you have to have calluses, just like the harp, you need calluses on your fingers, but the harp, you don't play with the pinky. So I felt like the harp didn't hurt me as much as like playing the guitar with those steel strings did. Maybe the nylon would be better. So do you like the, the steel strong uh, guitar or the nylon type? I would have to say the steel. Yeah, that one, you really got to practice a lot every day just to build up those calluses. And then, you know, there's so many wonderful guitars out there. Well, good luck. Pick up a guitar. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. How are you today? Good. How are you? Great. Great. Uh, my question for you is what was the hardest part of learning to play the harp? The hardest part of learning to play the harp. Okay. Well, I think balancing the thing, because if, if you can, re I don't know if you remember see me showing you the picture. I was kind of really teeny weeny compared to that big thing. So it was always balancing it and then trying to look at the music and the strings at the same time. So probably the balancing act for me was a little challenging. Then once I mastered that, I would say the hardest thing then was learning like all the pedal uh, combinations because there's seven pedals and they each move three ways. And then times two feet. And you can also take either foot and cross pedal or double pedal. So there's all these combinations, like hundreds. And that's what makes the harp really fun and challenging. If you would play an instrument, which would you choose? I would choose the piano. Piano, do you play anything now? Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope everyone gets super inspired today because I would love to see all of you perform in a concert. I think it would be amazing. Um, but you remember that your voice is an instrument you carry with you naturally. Uh, and if anybody ever did want to play a harp, they have these little harps and kits that you can put together just to get started on playing a harp, but it's really a lot of fun. And then some sometimes schools that have music programs they may rent harps you know and and have uh, have that going on but but it's it's awesome thank you so much you. The kids. hello hello my name is sarah hi sarah um my question for you is what is something you love about playing the harp Oh, that's a great question. All these questions have been great questions today. Um, I want to say the sound from day one, as soon as they said, well, trombone, tuba, or harp. Well, I listened to the tuba, and then, I mean the trombone, the tuba, pa, pa, right? And then the harp. So the sound is my answer. And, uh, and I'm going to ask you a question. So do you play an instrument? No. No. Okay. So, so what would you choose? I think that I would probably choose the piano. Piano. And you know what? Piano was my foundation. If you learn piano, first of all, my cousin who lives across the street is 90 years old. She is still playing the piano. That's pretty cool. So I think sports are a great thing. Um, and all those sort of things, but you know, music is a lifetime uh, joy, I want to say, is at least it is for me. And, uh, and I think especially during this whole pandemic, it's just been, uh, I've done so much with music. I've written a suite um, and it just poured out of me. It's like four different movements um, and it's in memory of George Floyd, which uh, that's kind of current in the news today. And uh, it's also representing the pandemic, like it had four different sections. So music really offers so much joy and you enjoy your day. 
Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name's Keeper, and hi. What what made you want to pursue music? Uh, well, as a little girl, at five years old. I would carpool to school with uh, my best friend and she had an older sister who played the piano. So when we came home, that she would be practicing furlies, you know, the Beethoven piece, da -da 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 -da, that famous one. And I just was, I just had to do that. I just heard her and I thought, how beautiful. And I went home every day. My parents go, well, we can't afford a piano right now. We don't have room for a piano and all those things. So then every day I kept saying that and they said, well, let's give her lessons and maybe she can practice on someone's piano to start to see if she really keeps up with it. And I did. So piano is the foundation of all the instruments. And then from there, I got over to the harp. So did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And then if, what instrument do you play an instrument? No. No. What would you choose? Uh, drum. Oh, drums are, seem to be the popular thing today. And you know what? You can get a hand drum. You can make your own drums. I have a, I, here's the funniest thing. I'll have to send it to, to Mr. Pratt. I have a percussionist friend. He came in from the hurricane and he gets all kinds of things, very creative. And he makes the most amazing percussion instruments. He got a pizza box and he filled it up with shells and little pebbles and things. And it's a shaker and he plays like these Caribbean rhythms. I mean, you can make your own drum set. It's just, there's so many creative things you can do. I think now we have a little more time to do things that are creative. So way to go. Gloria, you have just done a wonderful job today. We've enjoyed every minute and and we are to be blessed with one more song, I believe. Song, yes. And and this one is my favorite, as I told your students. Your students have been fabulous today and I really enjoyed their questions. I just only hope to be to be inspiring to them, but they've inspired me to play more and uh, and you know think about what sounds beautiful and, and even think about the beginnings of, of how I got into music. So I hope that they pick up music instruments. I'm going to send you that little video of my Caribbean friend that got shipwrecked from Hurricane Maria with the yeah. pizza box. Yeah, I mean, you can make all kinds of fun, fun things. Anyway, this piece is called Sakura Cherry Blossoms. Here we go. Mr. Pratt and all of your wonderful students and community. It's been such an honor. You're amazing. You're an amazing teacher to put together this wonderful program. Thank you. It's been an honor. To have you. Thank you, you. We can't tell you how much we've enjoyed it. We had, we've had comments. They say you've been wonderful. Thank you uh, so much, Glory, for joining us. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful day. And I hope that everybody 
picks up an instrument, even if it's singing something. You've right? inspired us. Yay. Well, have a blessed day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. And keep in touch. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.